One of the biggest pieces of money psychology that I've learned over the years is that our relationship with money has a very strong correlation to our personality and our lifestyle. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the five types of money personalities, and by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of where you currently stand in regards to money, so you can modify your behavior and habits accordingly in order to achieve your financial goals. Having a good understanding of your money personality types is one of the first steps to take when shaping your approach to saving and investing. So without further ado, my name is Caleb. Subscribe for more content just like this. Now let's begin. Now the very first money personality type is called the spender, otherwise known as the famous rapper. This person fundamentally enjoys spending money as an activity and doesn't really fear debt that much. They don't really think about money too often and they always want the latest gadgets and they want to rock the latest fashion trends. The spender absolutely loves brand names. They want a luxury car. They want a big house. They're a little bit on the materialistic side and they're a little bit less frugal or resourceful when it comes to money and saving. A spender might also take slightly bigger risks when it comes to investing. So maybe they'll dump way more money than the average person would into a certain investment. And overall, they just don't really care that much about coupons and sales and budgeting. They want that instant gratification. They want to live lavish. And I also call this person an accessory snob. And what I mean by accessory snob is I'm talking about the person that gets a new thing and then they have to buy like all the accessories for it and like trick it out. This person is called a spender. Now, fundamentally being a spender isn't always a bad thing because if you're a spender and you have the money to be a spender, then it's not that big of a deal. But if you don't have the money to be a spender, I'm going to talk about those later in the video. If you are a spender though, here's three different things that I would recommend for you to improve on. So first, obviously you need to shop less and you need to save more. I think that you should be seeking a long-term value with your purchases, not just this short-term gratification. And you need to ask yourself if these purchases will still provide value in like a year or two. And of course you need to calm the ego down a little bit because you don't need to be rocking designer brands. You don't need that nice car if you don't have the money for it. And yeah, now the second type of money personality would be the saver. Now this is fundamentally the exact opposite of a spender. They enjoy saving money as an activity or a hobby and they absolutely hate debt and materialism. They always prefer the like budgeting options. They make things last a lot longer. They're more conservative with their investments. In the most extreme cases, they will only spend money if there's a sale or a coupon involved and they have a high net worth, but maybe drive a crappy car and lives in a small house or a small apartment. A saver is really good about having delayed gratification with their purchases and they might be a little bit stricter when it comes to bills like electricity and water so maybe they're the type of person that you know turns the lights off when they leave the room or maybe they're more strategic about how often they do the dishes or wash laundry a saver is trying to get every value out of every single dollar that they can even in the littlest of ways a saver also loves a big cash pile but also might be scared of investing it at the end of the day someone who is a saver is someone who is addicted to saving money and addicted to seeing that bank account balance go up maybe they're really hesitant about spending money on stuff and they try to be as minimal as possible. Now, if you're this type of person, uh, kudos to you because a lot of people don't have this skill, but there's a couple of things that I want to mention that you might need to improve on. So first, you shouldn't rob yourself of, you know, fun times and memories and good old entertainment. You should ask yourself how much that dollar saved will impact you in six months and whether or not that would still be worth it to you. I think it's really important for savers to recognize that, you know, you can save money until the day you die, but if you're not enjoying that money, then it's kind of like, what's the point? So I would just say, you know, put your money to work, but also set aside some money to enjoy. Now, as I said before, for a spender is someone who spends a lot of money but also has a lot of money to spend. But if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of money to spend, then I would consider you to be a shopper. And that is the third type of money personality. A shopper is someone who spends a lot of money and they might actually be spending more than they make or more than they have to spend. And they might also have like an unhealthy addiction to buying things and they buy random junk and useless items just as a fun activity. And the main difference between a shopper and a spender is a shopper maybe gets more joy from the act of actually purchasing the said item than the use usage of the set item. A shopper might also see spending money as a social activity, and I would consider this to be a mall regular. A shopper is going to spend a lot of time at the mall or outlet stores, and they're not really concerned about the purchase price, they just want to go and buy things because it gives them that little boost of serotonin. Typically, a shopper is going to be paycheck to paycheck for the most part, and they might also be in debt a little bit, but they have zero interest in saving or investing, and I can almost guarantee you that their email is full of store promos and rewards program offers. Now, if you fall into the shopper category, don't worry, 
I ain't hating, but here's a couple of things that you could probably improve. The first thing is you want to automate your savings. So I know that saving money is probably really hard for you and it's probably a super foreign concept, but I promise you if you can just find a way to automate your savings where you don't even have to participate in it or look at it at all, you'll probably be able to spend just as much money almost while also saving a little bit on the side without even realizing. On top of that, I think you need to work on finding ways to have fun without spending money and you need to lessen the amount that, you know, buying stuff is a social activity for you. I think that you need to also limit spending to things that provide the most value. And above all else, I think you should learn about investing because for me, I used to be kind of more of a shopper or a spender personality type. And then I transitioned to more of the saver and investing type because I learned that investing gives you the same gratification as buying stuff at the store sometimes once you get really into it. So now when I buy like, you know, a stock share of Apple, it feels like I'm going and buying that, you know, designer brand of shoes from the store. And I still feel just as rewarded for my purchase. And I also feel better about it knowing that my purchase is actually working for me and is going to provide a lot more of a long-term value. Now for the fourth money personality type, we're going to take the shopper and the spender to the absolute extreme. And I call this the debtor. A debtor is someone who is always in some type of debt. They don't really think about money or budgeting either. And they also don't check their account balances basically ever. Someone who is a debtor probably has a huge issue with overdraft fees and late fees. And they're kind of like the minimum payment type person. A debtor absolutely spends more than what they make because this is why they're even in debt in the first place. And they typically will have a lower credit score and probably some maxed out credit cards. And this person might even sell some of their investments just to get out of this hole that they dug. To put it simply, a debtor is basically a shopper that you would never trust to borrow your money. Now, if you fall into this category, man, I, I get it. I get it. Life is hard and you need to spend money and maybe it's hard to make money. But I think that some tips to improve is one, you need to obviously make a financial plan and a budget and you need to just implement that into your life somehow, even in the smallest of ways can help you out tremendously because I think your priority right now needs to get out of debt. Now, if you are someone who is a debtor, I'm assuming that you know that being in debt is not that good of a thing and I know that you probably want to get out of debt and the easiest way to do this is just to keep track of all your spending and really see where all your money is going to because when you see that pie chart at the end of the month of like where you spent all your money the shock value is probably enough to shake you out of what you're doing and on top of this once you have a budget started then you can start to see like what ways you can minimize your spending and get a little bit more frugal so maybe you'll see a spreadsheet and you'll be like okay I spend 500 bucks a month eating out maybe I could cut that in half because that's a little bit ridiculous. Like I just said, looking at all the extra money wasted just for the shock value purpose, I think is a great way to get started with getting out of debt and getting out of this, you know, overspending mentality. And I also think that uh, money psychology plays a huge part in this. And so I would recommend not only to, you know, learn about investing a little bit, just like with the shopper and the spender, but I think that you should also learn about money psychology as a whole because maybe you're falling victim to a lot of, you know, like marketing schemes that you don't know about and, uh, you know, things like that. Like people are really good at advertising these days and are really good at reeling you in and making you want this product more than anything. So if you can just filter out some of those things that are, you know, kind of getting in the way of you saving money and you end up not overspending as much. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, now we're on the fifth type of money personality and this will be the investor, you guessed it. Now an investor is probably the best position to be in out of all five of these, but it's not always the best, but essentially a investor is very money conscious and they try to put their money to work. They try to find a balance between saving and enjoying money and they have a goal of financial freedom or passive income. Someone who is an investor is kind of a cross between a spend and a saver, but they're more on the saving side and they definitely can tend to overthink prices and money decisions. They're always weighing the risk to reward ratio and they also see money as a tool rather than just simple currency to buy things. A huge part about being an investor is kind of getting out of that consumer mentality and being someone who either provides value through a product and maybe invests in a business or a company or someone who wants to put their money to work as the tool that it is and invest all of it so they can maybe make some more in the future. An investor also loves to leverage money and seek better deals. They're the type of person that wants to negotiate all their bills down and, you know, negotiate with even people at the store and see if they can get like a buy one, get one free type of thing. They want to leverage their money as much as they possibly can and get the best value out of every dollar. And they're also someone who is a little bit aware of inflation and the prices of goods and services out in society. So this is the type of person that probably reminds you of what the gas prices are or reminds you of like a new tax law that came out and things like that. Fundamentally, a investor has a long-term vision for wealth and they're not 
not someone who just wants to get into some get rich quick scheme. And anytime an investor spends money, they typically will label it as investing in themselves. Now, if you are an investor, then kudos to you. And especially if you're investing under the age of 25 or 30, then really kudos to you. You're on the right track because a lot of the stuff they do not teach you in school. But a few things to work on, in my opinion, would be to continue educating yourself on money, of course. So if you're someone who has only dabbled in stocks and stuff, then maybe you could go learn about crypto or real estate. The next thing I would recommend is to loosen up a little bit and allocate some cash for enjoyment. So if you're an investor, you could be an investor and a saver at the same time. So someone who actually invests their money, but is still a basically allergic to spending money. So all I could say here is, you know, remember to enjoy yourself and enjoy your life and allocate a small portion of that to enjoy and have that be the purpose for it. Because all this extra money invested is going to mean nothing if you aren't actually doing anything fun with your life. Now, the last things I wanna mention about being an investor are of course to diversify and to also not be concerned with short-term fluctuations in the market. Remember that you're playing a long-term game here and it's better if you kind of spread yourself a little bit more thin, that way you can lessen your risk. And then on top of that, you also wanna be keeping track of all your stuff and maintaining security with all your different platforms. So if you're someone like me, you probably have an account with like two or three different brokerages. You might have a couple of different bank accounts. You might have a bunch of different credit cards and stuff like that. All I can say is just really keep track of all these things. That way you have a firm grasp on kind of like where all your money is at and you actually know what it's doing. And then you also could calculate your net worth fairly easily. One of the worst things you can do is be an investor with money in a bunch of different spots and then lose track of where it is. And then you forget about this, like, you know, five grand you had over here or this two grand you had over there. But overall, if you're an investor, you are on a great track and I'd say just keep doing what you're doing, keep learning and yeah, you should be good. So which money personality type best describes you? Let me know in the comments down below. Some parts of our financial personality will be more deeply rooted than others, but that doesn't mean you can't adapt or improve upon your habits. Knowing the ins and outs of your relationship with money can make it much easier to address financial challenges as they come and being effective at managing your money starts with something as simple as self-awareness. Don't be ashamed if your habits aren't great, but be real with yourself and recognize that no matter where you're at, you can do better and you can get to where you want to be. If you want to learn more about money psychology, be sure to check out this video right here on the five major money fallacies that could ruin your path to wealth. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.